Hello. Welcome to this video. This video will be on how to install CentOS 7 onto virtual or using VirtualBox. So, let's get started. So, after you downloaded uh, CentOS 7 or the image uh, ISO for CentOS 7, from there we can go ahead and create a virtual machine using VirtualBox. So, to begin, you open up your virtual box um, application and this will be the first thing that comes up and the reason why I'm not going over how to open that open it is is, is um, different ways of opening it depending on which operating system you have virtual box installed on and if you want to know how to download virtual box on your operating system whether it's uh, Windows uh, Apple or Linux or Unix go to the um, the uh, article in the description of this video and I'll go over how to do that and provide the links so anyway once it's open from here you want to go ahead and click on new left click on new and then you want to go ahead and put in your uh, operating system name which is C CentOS for us you want to choose the type which obviously is Linux and then you can choose the version which is already populated in there Red Hat 64 bit now this happens to be um, an image file that I downloaded and I put on my desktop for Syntox uh, 64 bit but it doesn't matter the, you'll you'll be able to use the same installation method whether 64-bit or 32-bit so let's go ahead and uh, hit next from here and then you want to choose the amount of uh, uh, RAM or memory that you want this to go off of um, under normal circumstances I would do it at 1 meg but for now let's go ahead and choose 4 megs Hopefully that'll, or no, you know what? Let's do six megs. Or six gigs of RAM. So that's gonna be 6,000 megs. All right. So, and then you click next. Then it's gonna ask you, you wanna create a virtual hard drive. You wanna choose our uh, create a virtual hard drive and click on create. You want to choose what type of uh, hard disk file type. You can go ahead and leave in the default, which is VDI, and click Next. All right, then you want to choose whether or not to have your storage dynamically allocated or fixed size. And the difference between the two is, with fixed size, it will automatically set aside that fixed size. So if you choose to have your hard, your virtual hard drive set to save 20, 50, 60, whatever the amount of gigs that you want to set aside for that hard disk or for that virtual disk, it will automatically dedicate that amount of size to that virtual drive. However, if you choose dynamically allocated uh, virtual disk, you can go ahead and set aside 20, 50, however many uh, gigs of space you want to but it only once you install your software in there it only uses the amount that that software takes up to give you a quick example let's say dynamically you set the hard drive for a um, hundred gigs then you install your software your operating system if your operating system is only using 10 to 20 gigs as an example it will only bring up that 10 or 20 gigs it won't bring up the whole 100 gigs that you automatically set for it, okay? So it just dynamically uses the amount of space that you have at the time of installation. Hope I explained that correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and click Next. And then you have your name in there. And then here's where you can choose the size for your virtual hard drive. For us, we're just going to do 20, right? 20 gigs, and then we're going to click on Create. Okay, now it's went ahead and created it. Now we want to go ahead and change some of the settings here. So we come over here to the right panel here, and we click on the first one, which is going to be general. 
Okay, then we see the name that we put in, the type, which is Linux and Linux 64 bit. We want to come over to advanced, look at this. You can choose, uh, this is choosing whether or not you want to save your, uh, your files and switch between using your host machine or putting files from your host machine into your guest machine, which our guest machine is going to be CentOS, or vice versa. You can go ahead and change that here if you want. I don't care. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, description, we're not going to deal with. Uh, encrypt the disk, we're not going to do that either. So, just the basic is fine. Let's go over to system. This is where you can choose, again, your basic memory. So, as you can see from here, we're going to have 6 gigs of memory. A lot of people take out the floppy drive in the boot order. We'll go ahead and do that as well. And we'll keep it on hard disk and optical. Everything else, you can go ahead and leave at the default. Come over here to processor. Okay, and we can go ahead and choose, since I got a quad core, I'm gonna choose two cores out of the four. Okay. Uh, enable PAE, you can leave that set to default. Let's come over here to acceleration. That's okay, you can accept the defaults for that. Okay, so we're good there. We go to display. Now, we are installing a CentOS server, so it's just gonna be all command line. We don't need the GUI, and most people, when they install a server, they don't install a GUI or a desktop environment. However, I will max out the memory of the video or video memory all the way to 126 that's good everything else we'll leave alone remote display we're not gonna worry about that and we're not gonna worry about video capture so we're good with that so we go down to storage and then from here you want to choose empty and then you want to come over to the far right click on this uh, icon here and then you want to choose this one right here. Choose virtual optical drive file. You left click that. Then you want to go to the image that you downloaded for CentOS. We have ours in the uh, desktop area. Okay, so you double click on that and then there's your image right there. And then you just click on open. All right, so you're good there. We're gonna skip audio. We're gonna go down to uh, network and we're only going to use one adapter this is using your uh network your network interface adapter so where it says attached you can either have it you can choose any option by default it has nat or nat which stands for network address translation okay what i'm going to do today so that it can only so that uh the other um uh, computers on my network will be able to access it in case I want to develop or make some type of a, a server like a file server or a web server or what have you you want to come here and change it to bridged adapter that puts everything on the same network right okay and so then that'll be it for the configuration of the virtual machine we just go ahead and click OK all right now we have our virtual machine created and then from here what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start it. This and we hit the start button and this will this will start the installation of our CentOS 7 operating system. So let's just go ahead and do that now. I click start. All right. And it's going to come up here. It's going to give you a certain amount of seconds. But to stop that, we're just going to choose, as you can see the options here, there's two or three. We're going to choose install CentOS 7. All right. That's what we're going to choose. And the only other thing I'm going to do before we start that is I'm going to come up here and click on view. And what I want to do is click on scaled mode. All right. Click on scaled mode and then switch scaled mode. Now. What this is going to do is this is going to allow me to make the screen as small or as big as I want. And what I want to do is I want to make it big enough 
so that you viewers can see it. So I hope that's good enough and I hope it's not distorted. Okay. And then like I say from here, we choose install CentOS 7. You can choose that with the up and down arrows. Okay. And as you can see, install 7 is highlighted. And then from there, we just go and press enter on our keyboard. And then from there, CentOS is going to go through uh, its installation. All right. And there it goes. It's starting right there. So for the most part, you can ignore a lot of these messages. It's just going through doing a post. And it's checking out the hardware, making sure everything is uh, compatible with it so that it can go ahead and start the installation. Okay, so we'll give it a few moments to do that. And then soon, the um, you'll see a pop-up or you'll see uh, a page come up. And it's going to come to a page. This is the page right here where you can choose your language. So you're going to choose whatever language you want. Obviously, I'm American, so I'm going to choose English. Okay, then you can choose your keyboard, but the default is already set. So we're good with that. So we're just going to go ahead and come down to the bottom right and click continue. All right. And now we come to this area. And what you want to do is go ahead and choose the area where you're at. You left click on it. We are already, it already has it set for me. I'm here, I'm actually in Florida, but the closest that I can choose is New York. So that's good. And then we come back up to the top left and we go ahead and choose done. And you come to keyboard. Keyboard is set to English US, that's good. So I leave that alone. Uh, language support is set to English United States so I'm good with that then we come down to installation source you can left click that I'm gonna choose the default so I'm good here so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on done software selection that's just gonna uh, that's you're not gonna see anything in here okay cuz we're choosing the minimum install so that's good so I click on done again Installation destination. It's already set to automatically partition it. But if you want to change it, you can go ahead and left click. And as you can see, this is the uh, drive that we have it set for. This is our virtual drive. This is where we're going to install our uh, CentOS. Uh, if you wanted to add a disk, you could. And then down here, you could choose whether you want to do it uh, partitioning automatically or you want to do it manually. We're going to choose automatically. So we're going to set that and we're going to click on done. All right. Okay. K dump is, is just a, um, this is uh, set so that you can uh, create logs or monitor your kernel through this K dump log. You left click it and you can enable it, set it for automatic or manual. I'm going to accept the defaults and click on done. All right your network host name and your network right you just go ahead and click on that if you want to enable it which we will come over here to the right click on enabling it right give it a moment and it's going to go ahead and generate um, all of the network information for us okay and it is set to connect it so that's good and then that's all we're going to do with that and then we're just going to click on done Okay, we're gonna leave privacy policy alone. Um, we're just gonna accept the defaults, but if you want it to configure it, you can just left click on it, come through, come on here and either turn it on or off. I'm just gonna accept the defaults for now and click on done. So we're done with that page. We're just gonna go ahead and click on bring uh, or begin installation. Okay, so the installation is beginning from here. So, the only other thing we're going to do is you can choose the option to set a root password and set up a user, a special user or, or a different user account. We are going to do both. So, I'm going to go ahead and click on first the root password. And I suggest that you do both. I suggest that you set up a, a root password and you set up a different, uh, another user in addition to the root. 
that way you can go ahead and sign in with the normal user and it's just an extra security precaution so we're gonna go ahead and set our root password it's gonna be a weak one all right and then look down here at the bottom it says it's a it's a uh, it's a weak root password but we don't care and we're just gonna hit done twice all right and that's set then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna set up our user okay and I'm just gonna add the same thing for my username then I'm gonna go ahead and make this an administrator or a, a person that has root rights and I'm just gonna put in my password and again it's gonna be a weak password and it's gonna tell me that okay and of course I don't have to tell you that if this is going to be a production server for you that you need to set a strong password you people know that right if you don't then you probably shouldn't be setting uh, um, a production server anyway but you guys know that so go ahead and make your password strong but because this is a tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and just set mine it's gonna be a weak one and then uh, let's see we are done and just go ahead and double click on it twice and we're good for that okay so the installation is going to take just a little bit longer so I'm gonna pause the video and then I will be back when we are done so give me a moment here I'm gonna go ahead pause the video and we will be back okay so we are back the installation has completed as you can see down here CentOS is not successfully installed and we just need to click the reboot button for it to reboot okay so let's go ahead and do that now we're gonna reboot it alright CentOS will go ahead and reboot and then from there we'll go ahead and log in so incidentally just so you guys know this is the same way you would do it to install this uh, CentOS uh, 7 on a bare metal machine or an actual machine that you want to be your server so just follow the steps here in the video and you will be able to set up your own server with CentOS so it is finished rebooting it has come up to the login screen and we're gonna go ahead and log on with the username that we created earlier then we're gonna put in the password all right and it has installed it has put us in so we are now in here so and this is uh this is our CentOS uh, 7 install or this is our CentOS 7 um, operating system this is how you install the CentOS server and so let's see here let's just run a few commands here all right and as you can see oh wait a minute Oh, I know. I think I need to put in. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So this shows us the version of uh, CentOS that we have installed on our system. So what we want to do from here is there are a few commands that you can run. One of the first things that you can run is our. Uh, you want to uh, get yourself familiar with the, ins the uh, install package of uh, CentOS and it's it's the same one whether you're using CentOS or the the Red Hat Enterprise um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux um, distribution which is um, Red Hat's uh, enterprise operating system and that is YUM and YUM is an acronym for Yellow Dog Update Manager 
and that's your installation or that's the uh, that's the install package that we use to install software okay um, like whatever software you want to install if you want to find uh, information about uh, a different type of software you can type in young or you want to use the sudo command because you need you need root rights to run yum you want to type in yum info and then let's say you want to uh, know how to install or have information about the nmap package or software package you just press that uh, let's see here sudo yum install we trust you yada 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 okay and then you just put in your password give it a few moments it's gonna populate and it's th then it's gonna give us information about the nmap package and there you go another search command that you can use with yum is going to be sudo yum search and that's in a P and then press enter and that as well is going to give you information about the package okay so that's all we have for today stay tuned for our next video where we will go over uh, what to do with your um, CentOS uh, server after you have installed it so thank you very much I appreciate you guys looking at this video and you have a good day